Ever since I heard that Karen was going to be our keynote speaker this afternoon, I've been looking forward to hearing her, and so I'm excited to be able to make this introduction. And I just want to say how uh, grateful we are to have her mother, Barbara, here with us as well. And Representative King, you would probably like to know that um, they have expressed their interest in helping us on the heartbeat bill. From the moment she was born, Karen Gaffney began an incredible journey that continues today. She is the president of a nonprofit organization dedicated to championing the journey to full inclusion in families, schools, the workplace, and the community for people with de developmental disabilities. She is doing this by creating awareness and calling attention to the value of life found in all people. Karen graduated from St. Mary's Academy in Portland, Oregon, and earned a two-year Associates of Science degree from Portland Community Colleges. She works part-time at Providence Health Systems. Karen successfully swam the English Channel as part of a six-person relay team. And two years ago, she accomplished her biggest swimming challenge yet. She swam nine miles across Lake Tahoe in 59-degree water to raise money for the National Down Syndrome Congress and to show the world that people with Down Syndrome are more alike rather than different from everyone else. Please join me in welcoming Karen Gaffney. So thank you, Rebecca, for a nice introduction. Good afternoon. I have a small window of time this afternoon to accomplish a pretty big objective. You see, it is my goal to have all of you walk out of here today with a new understanding of what Down syndrome is all about. And more importantly, I plan to enlist your support to not only celebrate our lives, but protect our lives as well. I should probably start by telling you a little bit about Down syndrome. The first thing I should tell you is, I have it. <laughs> it is not a disease. You can't catch it from someone. It's not contagious. And I certainly don't suffer from it. I just have it. Do you remember that session in high school biology where you learned? that our bodies are made up of cells, and every cell in your body has a set of chromosomes? Does that sound familiar to you? Sure it does. And as most of you know, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes in every cell in your body, 46 total. Well, I have one more chromosome than you do. That's all Down syndrome is, just one extra chromosome. It is just a tiny piece of material that is so small, you can only see it with a special microscope. But that's where the trouble starts, and so do the differences. Now, you might be wondering why we call it Down syndrome. Why not call it something like Up syndrome? <laughs> or something a little more positive than down. Well, it turns out, about 150 years ago, there was a doctor, John Langdon Down in England, who first determined that all of us have similar characteristics. He didn't know about the extra chromosome. That came much later. But unfortunately, we inherited his name anyway. How many of you have met someone with Down syndrome? Wow, okay. I bet many of you have. Maybe you have a brother, a sister, a cousin, an aunt, or an uncle. Maybe we were in your classes in grade school and high school. Well, now you all know one more person with Down syndrome, me. <clears throat> and I'm very happy to meet you. 
Another thing you should know about me, besides the fact that I have Down syndrome, is that I am a swimmer. I'm a long distance open water swimmer. A really long, long distance swimmer. In fact, I can probably swim much longer and much farther than anyone here in this room. <laughs> I may not be faster than you at the start, but I will outlast you on time and distance any day of the week. <laughs> now, if any of you, <clears throat> now if any of you are thinking about taking me up on this challenge, you should know I have some pretty big open water swims on my resume. A few years back, six of us from my hometown jumped in the water at Shakespeare Beach in Dover, England. And we swam until we reached Cape Blanc on the coast of France. And I became the first person with Down syndrome to swim a relay across the English Channel. After that, I took on Lake Tahoe, and I swam nine miles nonstop, straight across the width of the lake, from the Nevada shore to the California shore. That swim took me six hours to complete. <laughs> I also like to tell people that I am the first person with Down syndrome to escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> I have done that swim from Alcatraz Island, where the prison used to be, all the way across the San Francisco Bay, 16 times now. And, unlike some famous prisoners who have attempted that swim, I have lived to tell about it. <laughs> I have done many other open water swims in Donner Lake, the Boston Harbor, Dunleary Harbor in Dublin, Ireland, a five mile swim from Molokini to Wailea Beach in Maui, and an eight and a half mile swim from Vermont to New York across Lake Champlain, just to name a few. <laughs> I swim two miles a day before I head off for my job at Providence Health Services in Portland, Oregon, where I live. And I work out of weight, too. So I am always up for a swim challenge. But not today because today we have more important challenges to talk about. You see, if you put your head up and look around, you will see and hear and read about phenomenal accomplishments of those of us living with Down syndrome all around the world. You will learn about people who are graduating from their high schools, some going on to colleges, learning employable job skills, knocking on the doors of the companies in their communities, or starting their own businesses. Stories are pouring into websites and Facebook pages all around the world, celebrating phenomenal accomplishments of people with Down syndrome. People who have fought all the odds and are living and growing and contributing in the communities where they live. You'll probably read about the 17-year-old open water swimmer in Italy. Last summer, he was at the beach with his dad. And they both saw two young girls being swept out to sea with the riptide. They didn't hesitate. The lifeguards were too far away. They both dove in and reached the girls. Luckily, the 17-year-old had life-saving training and he knew just what to do. So he and his dad got the girls to shore just as the lifeguards arrived. 
both girls would not have made it to safety without that 17-year-old and his dad. Oh, did I mention that 17-year-old has Down syndrome? <laughs> You'll read about some talented actors and musicians, golfers, surfers, hockey players, fashion models and fashion designers, hard-working employees, public speakers, open water swimmers, and even some who have escaped from Alcatraz. <laughs> All showing what is possible with a full and inclusive life in the communities where they live. So, I am sure by now some of you are thinking, well, why is this so incredible? And what's the challenge here? I will answer both those questions. You see, 60 years ago in this country, people like me didn't even have a place in the classroom. Families had already started turning their backs on placing babies who were born with Down syndrome into institutions, which was often the advice 60 years ago. Instead, they brought their babies home and raised them with their brothers and sisters. But the neighborhood school was still out of reach for them. So families ignored this, he said. You know, we couldn't learn. They pulled together with all the friends and supporters they could have missed. They started knocking down doors, pulling out all stops, standing up for our rights and getting legislation passed that allowed people like me into the classrooms in the 80s and 90s. And then we started getting into classrooms all around the world. For many of those families, it was too late for their children. But they made it happen for my generation and the generations to come. I know that it is far from perfect. Breakthroughs haven't come for everyone. We still have battles to fight for inclusion and too many classrooms around the world. And employment is still a huge hurdle for us. But you cannot ignore the tremendous progress we have made. Given the, given the barriers we break through, I think our accomplishments are incredible. So, what's the challenge here? Well, I'll answer that question too. You see, those of us with Down syndrome and our families face a very difficult future. We face the possibility of wiping out all the tremendous progress we have made in the last 50 to 60 years. Why? Because just as we are making so much progress, a whole industry has grown up. An industry that is focused on prenatal screening. Screening that would wipe us out before we even take our first breath. Without timely and accurate information about what Down syndrome is really like today, if the test shows an extra chromosome, Babies are being aborted, except for those who say, I know a different Down syndrome, or wait a minute, let me learn more about this. However, there are many experts in the medical community who will say that extra chromosome we carry around is not compatible with life. Not compatible with life? So think about that for just a minute. Think about the people we just talked about. Think about all the people you know with Down syndrome. Your cousin, your brother or your sister, the person you see at the grocery store, maybe the person who is in your class in grade school and high school. Or think about me standing here. Am I? not compatible with life? 
you know, after all the progress we have made, all the barriers we have broken, all the odds we have beaten, I would say we are more than compatible with life. We are what life is all about. Our lives are worth living. Our lives are worth learning about. Our lives are worth saving. Thankfully, we have some phenomenal grassroots, family-driven medical research teams all around the world racing to outrun the prenatal testing industry. They are working at breakneck speed to find ways to improve our lives, not prevent them in the first place. The Global Down Syndrome Foundation in Denver, Colorado, the Hiroma Shun Foundation in Philadelphia, and the Lumine Foundation in Boston are just a few of the organizations that are pushing for medical research on Down syndrome to help us with memory, with speech, with cognition. They are pushing Congress to increase the budgets for Down syndrome research at the National Institutes of Health. And there is so much more to do. It was the wave of humanity that lifted us out of institutions, brought us home, got us into schools, included us in the community of life. <laughs> Sorry. It and it will require another wave of humanity to stop the targeting of Down syndrome all around the world. It requires people like you to stand up for us and with us and to help us show the world that Down syndrome is a life worth living. Down syndrome is a life worth choosing. And more importantly, Down syndrome is a life worth saving. Thank you for taking your time to hear what I've had to say this afternoon. Thank you.